Bonjour, salut. Hello, hello. I'm Marion Jones and this is City Breaks Bordeaux, episode 8. Bienvenue. Welcome. We've done lots of culture and history in previous episodes and now it's time to get serious about the other aspects of your city break, food and shopping. What lovely things can you eat and buy if you decide to take a break in Bordeaux? My experience when I went and my research, which I've followed up, both made it very clear that in both cases, what to eat, what to buy, there are lots and lots of choices, ranging from the very classy down to the quirky and interesting. And I hope in this episode to give a good sense of all of that. If you think about where Bordeaux is situated, with its lovely coastline and surrounded by rich agricultural land, it's clear that the produce is going to be top-notch, and so then, by extension, are the restaurants. And I'm hoping to give a quick rundown of some of the local specialities, some ideas about the best areas of town to find restaurants, and a few tips on individual restaurants. The Bordeaux institutions are on the list, if you will while of course remembering that what you're probably going to want to do is wander the areas where restaurants are to be found and pick for yourself. And then I plan to take the same approach to shopping. Where are the areas to go? How do they differ? Which are the shops to look out for? Everything from the swish and elegant, the sort of thing you find in Paris to right down to those selling local specialities and the flea markets and the food markets. Again, you're probably going to wander yourself and see what you can find, but I hope I'll be providing some useful pointers. So then, allons-y, let's get on with it. Starting with food, I should probably say first that there's going to be a massive great hole in this episode, the place where probably Bordeaux's best-known product isn't, and that's because wine had its own episode a little earlier on in the series, number six. So if you didn't catch it or you're new to City Breaks, you might want to go back and have a look for that. As far as edible products go then, what would the local specialities be? Top of the list, I think, is probably seafood, generally, but particularly oysters, and even more particularly oysters from the Bay of Arcachon. It's easy day out distance from Bordeaux. I'll be talking about that in the next episode. So you could consider popping out there and eating them in situ, but actually, thankfully, Lots of Arcochon Bay oysters are brought to Bordeaux and found in the restaurants, so that's something to look out for. Served on a bed of crushed ice normally, just as you may have seen elsewhere, but something you may not have seen, often served alongside little hot sausages. No, I'm not sure why either, but a tradition it is. As in so many parts of France, the local meat is very good. Look out for agneau de pauillac, if it's lamb you fancy. And in the beef department, Boeuf de Baza, B-A-Z-A-S, both of which are often mentioned on menus. A particular speciality, and in fact Nouvelle Aquitaine tradition, asparagus, particularly asparagus from Blay, B-L-A-Y-E, where you may go on a day out to see the chateau or drink the wine, but which is also the place for this vegetable. So at a market stall you might see the sign, Asperge du Blayé, so, asparagus from Blay or the surrounding area. Its earliest appearances in the city markets is said to mark the beginning of spring for a Bordeaux person, who may well tell you that this delicacy was enjoyed by Louis the Fourteenth himself in the 17th century and has been delighted in ever since. Such, in fact, that every year in Blay itself there is the Fête de l'Asperge, or Asparagus Festival. It takes place in April. You are likely, too, to find sep de Bordeaux, so little porcini mushrooms which grow very well down here, often served in restaurants à la Bordelaise, so in Bordeaux fashion, which tends to mean cooked in butter and garlic. Here in Britain we often end up buying porcini mushrooms in dried form, but in the markets and shops of Bordeaux you can buy them fresh and very easily. Another item much more commonly found in Bordeaux in the area than many other places, is the lamproie, the lamprey, caught in large numbers in the Gironde estuary. I've seen them described as primitive fish with no vertebrae. I've seen them described as eels. Either way, in the Bordeaux area, they are traditionally cooked with leeks and red wine, perhaps some cured ham, simmering for ages so that the flavours really develop 
and then served perhaps with garlic crouton. It's a caviar area too, even though sturgeon fishing has been banned since the 1980s, because it's an area where there are sturgeon farms. So those then are a few of the main ingredients. As for cooking terms that you might see on menus, a very common one is à la bordelaise, so cooked in the Bordeaux fashion, which tends to mean cooked in wine. That'll be red wine if you're talking about meat, and white wine if you're talking about fish. So entrecote à la bordelaise, for example, will come with a red wine sauce, probably with shallots and herbs in it. Escargot à la bordelaise would be snails cooked in tomatoes and probably white wine. Poisson à la bordelaise, again, a white wine sauce, probably with lemon juice too. What about sweets and cakes, I hear you ask? Ah yes, quite a few of those. And the main one, the one you'll see everywhere, and much advertised, is a little thing called the cannelé. Sort of a square cake, I've seen it described as being sandcastle shaped, which is actually quite accurate. They do come in various sizes, including tiny little ones, one of which you might find on your coffee cup at the end of a meal, and bigger, more cupcake-sized ones. The original recipe is said to have been developed by nuns centuries ago, when they combined flour and egg yolks with a splash of rum to make a crunchy little cake, well, crunchy on the outside anyway, but creamy inside. You will find them in restaurants, you will find them in baker shops, you'll find them too sold in boxes as souvenirs to take home. The other best-known little cake is called a dune blanche. Literally that means white dune, named then after a geographical feature commonly seen in the surroundings of Bordeaux. This is very well known too, but it has a different history because it was first baked in the 1980s by a local baker who took some choux pastry and filled it with vanilla-flavoured whipped cream, a bit like a profiterole really, but minus the chocolate. He was based in Cap Ferret, where he began to sell many, many, many of these little cakes and to find that people were coming out for the day from Bordeaux to enjoy them. So, of course, he made sure then that they were available in Bordeaux shops too. And I think it's fair to say that the Dune Blanche is now Bordeaux's second best-known little sweet treat. Just to name a couple of other bakery goods, there's a Bouchon de Bordeaux, which is a little almond and brandy-flavoured pastry. There's something called Fanchonette de Bordelaise, which are sweets with various fillings, almond, chocolate, fruit, that sort of thing. And as for the dessert menu in general, there's another item which I was surprised to see when I first went to Bordeaux, but soon realised was actually very commonly available, and that is la soupe aux cerises, which translates as cherry soup. And yes, it is indeed cherries cooked in red wine with some sugar and some vanilla, perhaps some star anise, into a delicious, sweet, sticky red liquid that, yes, is served in a little bowl, a bit like soup. I've seen... Red fruit soup as well, la soupe aux fruits rouges, if it's not just cherries in there, but maybe a mixture, raspberries, strawberries, whatever, added in as well. One excellent way to get to know lots of Bordeaux specialities all in one go is to go on a food tour. And I'll put links to a couple on the website in the blog post to accompany this episode. There are a number of different ones on offer, but basically for any of them, somebody will take you round Bordeaux tell you some stories and little bits of history and whatnot and make sure that you get to taste all kinds of delicious specialities from Bordeaux and the surrounding area. Just to whet your appetite, here are a few little snippets from the various website advertisements that I looked at. Would you like to go on a balade gourmande, a foodie tour, taking you round the quartier historique, so the old part of Bordeaux, and taking you into some of the best artisan chocolatiers, so chocolate mongers, and bakers and charcuterie producers, and cake and chocolate shops. Or, of course, you've thought of this yourself, why not go to a restaurant, of which there are, apparently, more than 3,000 in Bordeaux. There are lyrical descriptions about eating out in elegant squares, shaded by leafy trees, the choice of brasserie and michelin star restaurants and little bistros and quirky cafes, which awaits you. And while I'm reluctant to recommend particular restaurants which I actually ate in, not because they weren't great, but just because 
You never know if your taste goes along with someone else's. You don't know whether what was there last year will still be as good this year, etc. I thought it might be more helpful to run through three areas of the city where you will find a wide choice of restaurants, and then to mention a few of the individual restaurants which are Bordeaux institutions, ones that everybody knows about. So then, one place where you can definitely have lots of choice and a nice time wandering around picking is the Place du Parlement. Very central, a square dating back centuries. It's had other names in the past, actually. It was the Place Royale in the royal days, called something else, of course, after the revolution. And now they've hit on the compromise of Place du Parlement, Parliament Square, where you'll find elegant houses around a central fountain. You might hear a busker. You'll be surrounded by restaurants, lining the square and crowding into the nearby streets. The Bordeaux Tourism website says that, quote, whether you wish to enjoy after-work drinks on a weekday, snacks on a Saturday, or indulge in a Sunday brunch, Place du Parlement is the place to be. I would add that they didn't mention evening meals and lunches, all of which it's very easy to find there. Secondly, and also very central, the area around the Saint-Pierre church, Place Saint-Pierre, for example, a tree-shaded square where again you will have a pick of places to eat. And if you want to venture a little bit further out, then in the Chartrand area, there is also a Place du Marché, which is quite a little cultural hub, especially in and around the Market Hall, and where you will also find restaurants with terraces spilling out onto the pavements. And if you want to check out one of the Bordeaux Institution-type restaurants, I've got four or five recommendations, starting with the wonderfully named Le Chapon Fin, which means fine capon, and is, I think, the oldest restaurant in Bordeaux. First opened in 1825, one of the first restaurants in the city to gain the Michelin stars back in the 1930s. An absolute institution specialising in the tradition of haute cuisine française, but all based on the best products from the region, and which their chef sums up as being une cuisine réinventée a reinvented cuisine, généreuse et savoureuse, generous and flavoursome. And if you're thinking that it sounds expensive, I did notice that they do a three-course lunch menu for €40, Euros, on which you could enjoy monkfish or foie gras as a starter, then move on to roast lamb or roast pigeon, and have a dessert too. doesn't sound that expensive. And as an aside, if you're not aware, the idea of a set menu at lunchtime is a top idea in France, often means that you get similar food to the evenings at a cheaper price in a menu format, so a menu with a selection of starters, mains and desserts from which you choose. Secondly, another Bordeaux institution on the Place de la Comédie, so just up from the tourist office, very central, and that is the Grand Hotel. And while they do all sorts of things, I was particularly impressed by the description of their brunch buffet. Listen to this. Selection of various breads, cold entree, seafood, oysters, whelk, periwinkle, langoustine, shrimp, cheese platters, local charcuterie, scrambled eggs, meats, fish, etc. Etc. What have they possibly left out? And better still, if you have small people with you, they run, during this buffet session at least anyway, something called the Little Gourmet Area, where children can go off and take part in activities once they've finished eating, should their parents wish to linger a little at the table. Also very central in the Rue Saint-Rémy is the Brasserie Bordelaise, so literally the Bordeaux Brasserie, where you can expect classic French food with a bit of a regional slant, so think oysters and caviar, cassoulet and local beef or lamb, crème brûlée, tarte tatin, prunes soaked in armagnac. And if you're passing anywhere near the Saint-Jean railway station, don't ignore the brasserie there, which is a wonderful institution, dating from 1899, decorated in Art Nouveau style, so think mosaics, cast iron and glass, murals, somewhere to wait for your train in style, as the advertising says. So one of those beautiful, old-fashioned French brasserie, such as you find in Paris where you might, whisper it, go anyway, even if you're not actually catching a train. And finally, I thought I'd bring things up to date a little, 
by mentioning the restaurant called Set, so that's the number seven, at the Cité du Vin. It's called that, I think, because it's on the seventh floor of the museum and it's a place for fabulous food and, of course, of course, wine. Perhaps you've spent the morning looking around the museum, you know all about it now and you'd like to try something they have on offer. And that you can do all the while enjoying stunning views over the city. So what might you be offered there? Well, they do a lunch menu too. Two courses, currently at €29. Maybe white shrimps from the Garonne. Perhaps some local chicken or duck breast. Or, if you prefer, a vegetable millefeuille. And among the desserts, that grand French institution, the Café Gourmand. So a coffee with a few little sweet treats to go with it. I do like to try those because you often come across something you might not have ordered and get a chance to find out whether you like it or not. And if you don't, hey, there are two or three other things too, normally. A great option if you're the sort of person who really wants everything on the pudding menu. And actually, while I'm mentioning the Cité du Vin, there is a newish food hall nearby called Les Halles, just like the one in Paris was, where you can both buy foodie snacks to take away and find little tables outside some of the shops and restaurants to enjoy perhaps lunch there. Again, I'll make sure the links for that are on the blog post. So much then for food. Let's move on to shopping. And as I've just been mentioning the Bordeaux Institution, I thought I'd start with the Golden Triangle, which is three very classy shopping streets, all very central, which form a sort of triangle, if you look at them on the map. They would be the Allée du Tourny, the Cour Clemenceau, and the Cour de l'Intendance. So three exclusive streets full of elegant mansions from the 18th century, very close to the Place de la Comédie and the Grand Théâtre and to Notre Dame Church. They are wide streets then with elegant mansions, beautiful facades and on the ground floor cafes, brasseries and shops, but generally shops for luxury goods, upmarket food, the height of fashion. Here, for example, you will find Ralph Lauren, Louis Vuitton and Hermès. You will also find Jo Malone and a shop called Bayardron, which is the place to buy those little cannelé cakes that I was talking about a minute ago. I think they even do workshops if you want to learn to make them. And somewhere in the middle of all this triangle is a very classy shopping centre known as the Galerie des Grands Hommes, so the Gallery of Great Men built after the revolution on the site of two convents. How secular is that? And really, a 19th century iron and glass establishment with a stunning central dome, just like the ones in Paris. And even if you're not shopping, pop in anyway to have a look at the dome, because it is impressive. If you do go in, you'll find it's basically produce on the ground floor and more modern shops upstairs. It's a circular building. And in the circular road around it, lots of cafes and restaurants. And radiating out from the centre, eight streets, all called after French philosophers, which is, I think, why it's called the Grands Hommes, the Great Men. And yes, I'm afraid they are all men. Perhaps I'll put that right at some point. So the philosophers remembered there include two homegrown Bordeaux philosophers, Montaigne and Montesquieu. More info coming about them in the final episode I'm planning for this series. And there are roads too named after Rousseau and Voltaire. So that's all the classiest shopping in Bordeaux, I think it's fair to say. As for what answer would most people give if you asked where shall I go shopping in Bordeaux, I think they might say La Rue Sainte Catherine, St Catherine's Road, the longest shopping street in Europe apparently, leading from the Place de la Comédie, so again nice and central, right down to the Place de la Victoire. 1,200 metres in total, shops on both sides. Think chain stores and restaurants, yes, but also at the Place de la Comédie and the star of the show, the Galerie Lafayette, in an elegant Art Deco building. That one worth a look, whether you're buying anything or not, I would say. The street was built really in the 19th century, but following the route of a Roman road, so it's a real artery through the city. And it was pedestrianised in, I think, the 1980s. So quite pleasant to walk down, car free and whatnot. And a rather snazzy new marble decoration on the pavement. Although I have to say, if it's a wet day, watch out, because it is quite slippery. 
So those two places, the Golden Triangle and the Rue Sainte-Catherine, I think are the main answers to where do I shop in Bordeaux. But in order to add to that a little bit, I had a look at the Bordeaux tourism website and picked out a few shopping streets which they recommended. I'll just mention the names now, along with a little idea of the sort of thing you might find in each. But if you find the names hard to catch, do remember they'll all be written out in full on the blog post. OK, so they recommended La Rue des Remparts, so Rampart Street, for a mix of shopping, including, quote, a mix of famous names and independent boutiques, a haberdashery, fashion jewellery, tea, interior design ideas, toys, a barber, a sweet shop and restaurants. Then there's the Rue du Pas Saint-Georges, so literally the road in the footsteps of Saint-Georges, confusingly in the Saint-Pierre area, also full of little restaurants and lots of independent shops, the sort of place where you might be able to buy some examples of French craftsmanship. In the wonderfully named Rue du Loup, which means Wolf Street, also quite central, there are restaurants, a tapas bar, etc., but also lots of second-hand shops and vintage boutiques. And if it's vintage which interests you, then you should certainly have a look at the Chartrand district, the riverside area just a few minutes' walk from, say, Place de la Comédie or the Quinconce area, where you will find wine merchants, I think we talked about the reasons for that in the episode on wine, alongside lots of antiques dealers and art galleries and shops selling goods by independent artisans. Quite the bohemian feel, really described somewhere I noticed as being a little bit the same feeling as you get in Montmartre in Paris. If you enjoy wandering and browsing, aren't too sure exactly what you want, but are leaning towards something vintage, then this would be the area where you could spend a very enjoyable morning or afternoon, I'd say. It's perhaps the Rue Notre Dame in the Chartrand area that you want to head for first. I saw a couple of interesting sounding shops recommended there. The Ours Blanc, the White Bear, Antique Dealers at number 5, and Le Village Notre Dame, further along at number 61. Perhaps, if that's your inclination, you're somebody interested in markets, in which case I have quite a few to recommend. Starting with the best-known food market, the one that's nicknamed the Stomach of Bordeaux, and is called Les Capoussins. Originally a cattle market in the 18th century, one that attracted traders, and which is now the biggest food market in the city, with, I think it's roughly 80 stalls. All sorts of things, artisan bread, local cheeses, I found a triperie, selling tripe, speciality cheese stalls, lots of seafood and some tapas, an oyster bar, which turns out to be quite well known, called Chez Jean Mi, rave reviews on TripAdvisor, which say things like, the seafood was super fresh, we ate on their terrasse and were served very quickly. We'll certainly be going back. I noticed too around the market a number of signs which made me smile. One of the vegetable stalls labelled itself as Specialiste Champignon, so a specialist in mushrooms, and why not? One of the butchers was keen to note that Ici, toutes nos viandes sont françaises. Here, all the meat is French. And I especially enjoyed the chalk scribbled sign outside one of the baker's which patiently explained that you might call them pan au chocolat, but actually, down here, they are called chocolatine. The Capucin market would certainly be a boon if you're self-catering and want to go and have the pick of Bordeaux produce to eat for your dinner that night. But actually, even if you're not buying, I think a wander around a big, bustling food market like the Capucin gives you an insight into the city where you're staying. I've picked out two much smaller markets which are in places that you might be passing anyway, so if you want a little bit of French market life without going out of your way, there is the Pays Berlant market in, of course, the Pays Berlant Square, which I think dates only from 2021, but was set up to revive that old tradition of a market clustered around a church. It's open two days a week, Wednesdays and Sundays, just mornings, it closes about two o'clock, I think, and it's quite small, 15 stalls or so, but all the things you would want, fruit and vegetables, cheese and meat, honey, bread, some wine, some flowers, somewhere to wander through after your visit to the church or before you go to the art gallery. 
or as you choose which of the surrounding cafes you'd like to stop at. And then up near the Cité du Vin, which you may well also be visiting, there is the Al de Bacalon, where you can buy organic bread and cheeses, homemade ice cream, find a wine merchant's, buy snacks, a rotisserie or tapas, an interesting and good value lunch stop, if you're up in that area anyway. And then there are the flea markets, another Bordeaux institution, the Saint-Michel one, for example, held on Sunday mornings around the Saint-Michel church, where I read somewhere you can find, quote, everything from bicycles, African masks, tableware and vinyl records, dot, dot, dot. Nearby, there's one of those shopping arcades at 15 Place Canteloupe, where you will find 20 or so market-type shops, all clustered in a building that used to be a banana ripening factory, and where a description I read gives you an idea of the range of goodies on offer. It is, it said, swarming with art deco objects, trinkets, silverware and vintage furniture. And again, as mentioned earlier, I think the village of Notre-Dame, up in the Chartrand area, a whole collection of antique shops specialising in everything from the 17th to the 19th centuries. Paintings, sculptures, clocks, furniture. You find all of them at 61 to 67 Rue Notre-Dame. And finally, a number of individual shops, which are also Bordeaux institutions. I've already mentioned one of the most amazing ones, the Intendant Wine Shop, described in episode 6. So, to summarise here, a tiny looking shop with a central spiral staircase winding up through four floors, all crammed with wine bottles on every wall. Apparently they have several million and 20,000 square metres of cellars too. And very helpful assistants who didn't seem to mind when I went in and said, I don't know much about wine, but... dot dot dot, and sent me on my way with a very acceptable present for someone I know who knows a lot more about wine than I do. So I definitely recommend that. There's a whole range of independent cheese shops. I picked out three, they'll all be mentioned on the website, and just one speciality from each one to give a little bit of a flavour of the thing. There's the Derule Fromagerie, which offers something called Escadu, described as a soft cheese, organic with a walnut stroke hazelnut flavour. Then there's Madame Fromage, where you can buy local mozzarella, and the Fromagerie Bévert, which offers the sheep's cheese, fruity flavoured, very tasty with cherry jam, apparently. If it's chocolate you're interested in, then there's Sognon on the Cour Clemenceau, so one of the Golden Triangle streets, an institution which has won lots of prizes at the Salon du Chocolat in Paris. And you'll find those little cakes called cannelé in boxes in lots of places all over the city. But the place to buy them is on the Cour de l'Intendance. So again, in the Golden Triangle. And the shop, huge red front, you can't miss it, is called Bayardron. And just to end, two bookshops, both amazing in their own way. Firstly, the one which really is a Bordeaux institution, famous throughout France, I think. In fact, the country's largest independent bookshop, and that is the Librairie Mola, M O L L A T. It goes back centuries. It was originally five adjoining mansions, sort of cobbled together with 18 kilometres of shelves, apparently. Montesquieu himself, the philosopher, lived in one of these houses in the 18th century. Today, though, it's just a higgledy piggledy, room to room, sort of place where you never quite know what section you're going to come upon next, be it literature or travel or science or books for kids or history. I read somewhere that they've got 50 sales assistants, many of whom are specialists in one area or another, so it really is the place to buy books. But I was just as impressed with the Quai des Livres, that's the name of a bookshop on the Rue Victor Hugo, Again, a road you're quite likely to find yourself in. And this is an enormous second-hand bookshop. Also quite ramshackle, somewhere enjoyable to just wander around with an open mind, knowing that you're bound to find half a dozen things you just have to buy. They do have an English section there. Lots and lots of French paperbacks, but also what they call some beaux ouvrages, so beautiful copies, and livres rares, rare books. 
run by a specialist librarian who has one objective, he says, and that is to offer you good reading. I have a feeling if you wandered in and said vaguely what you're interested in, he'd go rummaging and find you all sorts of goodies. And they do a mail order service as well. Again, the titles and links to both of those shops will be in the blog post. And just to finish, I have to mention that the tourist office has a bookshop and gift shop, selling local products, quite a range of books about Bordeaux, some of them in English, and souvenirs, of course. And it does have the advantage of being very, very central. So that's it for today, then. Can I remind you just finally again that lots of this information will be handily summarised on the accompanying blog post, along with links to all the places I've mentioned, lots of pictures. So, all useful stuff, I hope. And actually, if you get to the website, you might want to browse some of the other cities on there, whether they be the French ones, currently Paris and Toulouse, although a third one is proposed very soon. Or, of course, go a bit wider afield, other classy cities with lots of interesting history and culture such as, I don't know, Edinburgh, Munich, Seville. They are three of the places out of, I think it's 11 currently, which have their own series on the City Breaks website. And just before I finish, a nod to the next episode, which will actually be the penultimate one in the Bordeaux series, and which was originally going to be about nearby Saint-Emilion, which is a wonderful day trip idea, if you fancy one day out of Bordeaux, but which actually I think I might expand and use to mention other day trip ideas too, because there are in fact plenty to choose from. So I hope you will be able to join me for that. But meanwhile, thank you, of course, as ever, very much for listening, and goodbye until next time. In French, that could be summarised as Merci beaucoup et à la prochaine fois.